What's going on guys? We YouTube here, back with another video. Um, hope everyone had a good Christmas. Today I'm going to be talking about the Fire King archetype. I kind of meant to be talking about this archetype for a while. I've actually done a few videos on it and never, haven't uploaded any of them just because I don't think any of them are really adequate. Um, sometimes I flame the deck horribly, sometimes I think the deck is actually alright. But I'm just going to settle on the fence and say that the deck is okay. So basically it revolves around four Fire King monsters, all of which, if destroyed by a card effect, you can special summon another one of them from your hand. So it definitely shows that there's a lot of kind of circularity in the deck. You constantly have field presence, but it, it's also bad in hand management. So you're going to take cards out of your hand very, very easily. So the four monsters are Fire King Avatar Barong, who, if destroyed by a card effect, you can add one Fire King card from your deck to your hand during your next standby phase. Fire King Avatar Quillen, so he just lets you send a Fire Monster from your deck to the graveyard. Fire King Avatar Yaksha, who, if destroyed by any means, uh, you can destroy one card in your hand or on the field. And finally, Fire King High Avatar Garanix, who is arguably the best of the Fire King monsters. Most of the decks I've seen revolve around destroying him by a card effect somehow, with Fire King's Fire Ring, for example, which lets you destroy one Fire Monster and special summon another one from your graveyard. Torrential Tribute, Call of the Haunted if you chain it to an opponent's MST, uh, Dark Hole, uh, Goka the Pyre of Malice, so you special summon him and then you destroy a Fire Monster. So that's another way to destroy uh, Fire King High after Garnick. So that is pretty much the way you go about doing that. But it is a little bit inconsistent in that sometimes when you draw them in your hand, you can main deck cards such as Trade-In to get rid of them, to draw cards. But the danger of main decking multiple copies of them is that you might not be able to get him uh, you know, destroyed by card effect enough, and he might end up being on the field and just being destroyed by battle. But that isn't too bad because when he's destroyed by battle, you can special summon any Fire King monster from your deck. Except for him, of course, otherwise it would be stupid. Um, so that's not too bad. So pretty much either way, unless he gets deep prison or bottomless trap hold or something like that, you're going to plus off this guy somehow. So it's kind of nice. So his, his his better effect is obviously when he's destroyed uh, by a card effect and sent to the graveyard. During the next standby phase, he's special summoned and destroys every other monster on the field. So he's like a dark hole and Sacred Phoenix of Nevitz is like the heavy storm. So if you use both of these cards and you can bring them out quite easily, then the deck shouldn't be too bad. You can also run Flambelle Fire Dogs. I shall also point out at this stage that uh, all of the Fire King monsters and Flambelle Fire Dogs, of course, have 200 defense points, which is why Rekindling is in the deck. Um, of course, I also have Dark Hole, Monster Reborn, and Heavy Storm, and three copies of Fire Formation Tanky, which is meant for the Fire Fist archetype, but it allows you to add any level 4 or lower Beast Warrior type monster from your deck to your hand. Um, on some of the Fire Kings, it's easily one of the most broken spell cards in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. It basically allows you to special summon any beast, wing beast, or beast warrior type monster from your deck. Its effects are negated and the monster is destroyed during the end phase. So the ideal situation would be to special summon High Avatar Garnix if your opponent went first, uh, provided he doesn't get bottomless trap hold or something, which would suck. And then during the end phase he gets destroyed, come back, comes back during your next, opponent's next standby phase, and blows up stuff. So it's kind of nice. Uh, three copies of Mandel Counter, three copies of Horn and the Phantom Beast. So, this deck isn't really fully built, and the options are still there, for sure, for kind of variation and stuff like that. I mean, I've seen so many other builds. I've seen builds with Enthusiastic Beast King, Bear Man, and, you know, other weird stuff like that. Uh, running cards like Generation Shift, Destruct Potion, uh, the, the Disorderly March for draw power. But basically, Fanbell Counter lets you banish a Fire Monster with 200 defense from your graveyard to negate a Spell or Trap. That, to me, is pretty much like free negation. Um, as I said, Trenchal Tributes, again, are for destroying stuff. So overall, what I think of the archetype... I think it's good, but I don't think it's as good as Atlanteans. Why? Because Atlanteans basically have free reign in terms of search ability and the ability to destroy your opponent's cards. Whereas, you know, this deck kind of has to sit on 1800 beaters a lot. It just has to kind of sit around. It can explode, obviously, a lot more than the Atlanteans can because the two cards that allow them to special summon uh, more than two monsters, the, the Mermail one and also Call of the Atlanteans, they're a little bit inconsistent in that one of them doesn't let you special summon and the other one... Uh, they're special summon in defense mode, and they can't declare an attack and they're destroyed during the end phase, you know. So that's kind of bad. But Rekindling is obviously way more consistent than that. It just lets you special summon everything. <laughs> it's pretty simple. So with that in mind, it, it is pretty good at swarming. Another card that is particularly good for it is Enthusiastic Beastman Wolfberg. But what I will say is that Rekindling is pretty much all it has. And if it loses Rekindling, then it is very likely going to lose the battle. Uh, and there are some new XYZs that it can go into as well. So... In going to deal with the terrifying, he's basically like a scrap dragon for beast, uh, beast warrior or wing beast type monsters. Um, also, we have Brotherhood of the Firefist Tiger King. Uh, he's really meant for um, you know firefist decks. 
and I'll probably do another video on them in more detail. I've already done one, but I'll do a much more detailed one when the set actually comes out in a few weeks' time. So, uh, Blood of the Fire Fist, Lion Emperor. The way to get him out would basically be to normal summon this guy and special summon this guy from the graveyard or another copy of Blood of the Fire Fist Spirit. So, overall, I think the deck is good. I think it has some consistency issues. It has the options. There are definitely so many options that it can do. If you, you could just run a bunch of level 8s and run trade-ins and uh, you just keep blowing up your Fire King monsters and Fire King's firing and bring back all the really powerful level 8s. You know, that's a pretty good strategy. Or you could concentrate on, on like boosting your life points uh, and that's a good way to destroy Garnix as well. Um, you could just focus on sheer swarming. Maybe build a level version of the deck and just constantly go rekindling. And uh, maybe Pyr Pyrrhex the Elemental Lord is another card that you know people are thinking about. So for those of you who don't know what he does, basically he's like the other Elemental Lords in that you require five fire monsters to summon him. And when he's special summoned, you destroy one monster. It says target one monster, so it doesn't necessarily have to be face up. And then both pairs take damage equal to half its original attack. So, and then again, if he leaves the field, uh, your opponent skips their, you skip your, their next battle phase, rather. So, um, there's no real other extra deck cards that are worth mentioning, apart from Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Horse Prince, who, again, is meant for that type of deck, but it's all Beast Warrior stuff, so it really doesn't matter. But anyway, in summary, I'm just going to say that the deck, I think it's going to be popular simply because it's new, and people are going to try and figure out some ridiculous OTK with the deck. I mean, there are plenty that I can think of. I mean, for example, if you activate Fire King's Firing during the battle phase, you can chain the effects of these guys in the hand and special summon them during the battle phase. So that kind of gives your opponent a bit of a surprise. They're like, you're like, attack, respond to declaration, no, chain this, uh, blow Biaksha, destroy Garnix on my hand, and then special summon Baron from my hand. Uh, so you're losing two cards on your hand, but you're going to get to search, and you're going to get to special him during the next standby phase. So there's definitely some nice combos in the deck, but all I would say in conclusion is that I find that it's a little bit inconsistent. Um, it doesn't have any kind of power cards other than Garnix, and if you can sort out Garnix with D-Prisons or whatever else, then your opponent will be in a bit of, um, you know, will be in trouble, basically. Anyway, guys, that is it for the video. As I said, I hope everyone had a nice Christmas. I certainly did. And I will talk to you guys later. Peace out.